What happened with Darius Smith and the Ravens? We talk about that. Michael Pierce and more with a very special guest next here on Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And we return here with another episode of Locked on Ravens, or daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I am your host, Kevin Ostreicher of Ravens Wire. We're, of course, here on the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked on Ravens your first listen of the day. We're free and available on all platforms. We're back here, our last virtual background edition of Locked on Ravens, and we'll be back to the actual background where I can actually touch the wall on Monday. <laughs> but here today to dive into some pretty crazy free agency news of the Baltimore Ravens and where other free agents fit on this team, former Baltimore Ravens wide receiver, Super Bowl champion, Kadri Ismael. Q. It's been a very hectic week for this Baltimore Ravens team. Signing guys, thinking they've signed guys. How you doing today? I'm literally on my phone looking at just news. And you could see the different teams and the way they were jockeying for position. And normally, I wouldn't be necessarily jumping all over this because what the Ravens normally do is sit back and wait kind of to that second wave of free agency. But hey, you're you're forced to look at it now because the Ravens are like, look, we're tired of, um, you know, looking at ourselves in the mirror, recognizing that we didn't get it done last year. We were, you know, on the outside looking in. Heck, our division rival who really didn't have much playoff success, they went all the way to the Super Bowl. That should have been us. We need to make changes. Eric DaCosta is being very bold in trying to jockey his team for positioning of said changes. And so I'm like, wow, okay, this is happening. Is there anything else come about? So, yeah, obviously what you're saying as far as the Darius and just the kind of madness of what is now the Ravens jumping into the, the bowl of free agency. Right. And it's almost, it's an arms race in the AFC right now with everybody trying to one up the other, especially in that AFC West. You know, we're recording here off of the pretty fresh Devontae Adams news where he gets traded from the Green Bay Packers Mm -hmm. to the Las Vegas Raiders. So that that AFC West is looking mighty tough. The AFC is looking tough. But yeah, you're right. The Ravens, they've made some splashes. And I know some people, they were kind of questioning, will this be the offseason? The Ravens become a little bit more aggressive and do some things. But Q, you talked about Zadarius Smith there. Smith apparently signed a three-year deal with the Ravens, or it'll be four-year deal with the Ravens. It was a good deal for the Ravens. It was, you know, kind of probably under Smith's market value. He ends up agreeing to terms on it, could be worth up to $50 million, but then word comes out that Smith is actually not signing with the Ravens. And a lot of people were excited for the reunion as a Darius Smith in Baltimore. He turned himself into a premier pass rusher in Green Bay, could have really helped out this team, but now He's back on the free agent market and not going to be a member of the Ravens. So, Q, what what do you think went into this? Was this more of a money decision for him where he might have seen the guys like Von Miller and Chandler Jones get those big money contracts and all of a sudden he's thinking, huh, well, I haven't signed the contract yet. Maybe I could do a bit better. I honestly think, you know, as, as, you, as you go over it and you, you're kind of getting more and more of the, the understanding of things, you know, whether it been Randy Gregory who – I'm going to go, no, I'm not going back to Dallas. I'm over here in Denver. I think uh, there's an there's a shift, if you will, for agents to represent their clients in the offseason um, to get the most out of you know the team and, and to get as many guarantees up front and, and, and lock you in, if you will, uh, rather than sit back and allow the team to dictate the terms. And if you have two parties – involved then that's where your leverage game kind of is enhanced so i think for D- zadarius you know he recognized yeah you know guys like a randy gregory as you said you know the von millers of the world you know he's somewhere in between there um certainly you know doesn't have the quite the resume of Vaughn, but but he's no slouch i mean make no mistake about it he you know left a organization that's been known for its defense and usually other teams you know pick up and and take their coveted defensive players and those defensive players don't necessarily live up to the challenge but 
you know, Zadarius more than lived up to the billing when he was healthy and out there. Obviously, he had the injury last year and missed a significant period of time. But when he was out there on the field, he, he made his presence felt. And I think he would have been critical for this Ravens ball club. Although, you know, who knows? In, in, in the negotiation world, could be some last-minute maneuvering, you know, to get more guarantees. Who knows what's going to go on? But I do know this right now. Yeah, Darius Smith, you know, he came, he went, and that was that. So uh, I love the fact that, um, you know, from a, uh, a Ravens front office standpoint, they were so aggressive right away in saying that they want to improve their their ball club. And they went out and got guys like Zadarius, or at least attempted to get Zadarius. Yeah, and Q, you talked about how, you know, Smith was someone who could have came in and make a, made a huge impact for this team. And I know they they're, they technically aren't losing him because he was technically never really on the team. But how big is the loss or the idea of having a player like Darius Smith right there, that top pass rusher, so then all of a sudden he's no longer there? How big is that for a Ravens team that really did need help in the pass rushing department? Well, I tell you what, you know, impact players – whether it been, you know, you, I'm, I'm just in my mind just looking at the, the, the defensive stalwarts that have come through, but Trevor Price's of the world, you know, come to mind and, um, you know, Elvis Dumerville uh, comes to mind, you know, guys who, boy, when they, they came here, they just showed up and, and showed out and, you know, they really made a, a huge difference and, and, and showed why, you know, this this team can pick some some free agents. And we just didn't see that, you know, from whether it be Wolf, you know, somewhat with um, uh, Calais Campbell, maybe a little bit in the first year. I think, you know, maybe we were hoping to see more. But just overall, you know, you just you impact, that impact player, that, that guy. Uh, I think that's why Wink Martindale is – no longer a Ravens defensive coordinator because of that lack of impact. And I think Zadarius would have brought that kind of swagger, if you will. I know that uh, Adafi Owe, um, he would have been in his second year. He would have come into his own. I think that would have been a good tandem to kind of explore. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. I think this is interesting how it, it is all unfolding. Yeah, and for a player like Zadarius Smith who – is coming off of that back injury, as you talked about, only played in one game in 2021. It seemed like Baltimore was okay with the medical records, and it, it seems like nothing on their end where it's like we, we look at the Ryan Grant situation or Michael Brockers where they were the ones who kind of backed out of those. And you know you can say what you will about the Ryan Grant deal. I, I didn't think it was great when they made it, and that was more of the, oh, Michael Crabtree just became available. Huh, <laughs> well, we haven't made the deal officially yet. Let's kind of back out. This wasn't that. This was – there were probably a couple factors in here, but just big at the athletic reporting that the Ravens thought they had a deal with Smith or at least verbally multiple times. And then I don't know where miscommunications came in there are multiple areas where that could have been, but at the same time, the Ravens, again, not losing a player because he wasn't really on the team, but he's a player that really could have came back and made a huge impact in my opinion. And he, when looking at the Ravens pass rush now, and we'll get into a little bit more of this in the third segment, but how do the Ravens now approach their edge room now not having a player like Smith in it? Do you still think they should go out and sign a veteran? You know, other, other guys out there include you, Devion Clowney, Justin Houston, et cetera. They also could take an edge at 14. How would you go about this if you're the Ravens to try to, I guess, compensate for the loss of Smith now? I mean, the elephant in the room has always been the draft. I think the Ravens, they've done a really fine job of doing their homework and recognizing who are the top 100 to 150 players that are draftable, that that are, are stud players, um, to get you know a chance to get uh, the, the the 14th best guy, if you will, um, your best guy that you're going to pick, because obviously, whatever their pecking order is, once that board is set and names from you know teams from other um, from other teams make draft choices, excuse me. When those draft choices are pulled off, obviously the, their board readjusts and reassess. And in that reassessment, I, I kind of look at it as like, all right, 
in the reassessment, I think this is a, a great opportunity to get this guy. If it is a defensive uh, end, if it's a rush guy, then then I would say let's do it and 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 roll with some young dudes and uh, Adafe as well as whomever the next you know young Raven's going to be. Um, at the same time, yep, do what do what you normally have done in the past. In this, that you've waited for like a Justin Houston. Um, but at the same time, if you feel like maybe in the second early wave of free agency, if there is a guy that is released, um, that there might be a chance to, to, to get him. Or if there's another guy who agent, you know, felt like, yeah, you know, we want to shoot up here. We didn't get any offers. All right. Well, now you're in the mix and we can, we can start talking shop. And if the numbers work, I think those are some win-win scenarios that you definitely got to look at if, if you're, uh, you're Baltimore. But draft, that's priority number one. I, I think that's just clear and present. And that's what you've been doing. Hang your hat on that. Yeah, I, I think so, too. The Ravens have multiple avenues to explore. And at the end of the day, I think what they might end up doing is taking one or even two edge rushers decently early in this draft class and maybe providing another veteran almost a, a top top end stopgap, such as Clowney or Houston. I think that would be a nice avenue to kind of – make up for the loss of a Smith type player, but still have enough salary cap to go out there and make other impact additions at other positions. We'll head into our first break here though. When we get back, we'll be diving into the Ravens re signings that they have made over the first couple of days here for agency. So stay tuned for that. And we'll be right back. But first I do want to tell you a bit about bet online and as March madness continues here, I did pick Gonzaga. And so yeah, I know a lot of people have <laughs> gone with different champions. I'm, I usually pick Kansas, but I'm going with Gonzaga this year, but it's not just college basketball, the NBA, hockey, UFC, live betting, betonline.net has it all. It's your number one source for all your sports needs and info. So head to the website today, use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action, bet online where the game starts. We return here with our second segment of Locked on Ravens here on Purple Friday. Kevin Ostriker still here with Kadri Ismael in Q. We, we talked a bit about the signing that almost was for the Ravens. And now look, let's talk about the signings that were and that have happened for Baltimore, one being, let's start with Marcus Williams, the big ticket free Asian addition for this team. Five years, $70 million comes in and is now a rangy free safety ball hawk type player, can force turnovers, 15 interceptions over his first few years in the NFL. And he it really, when you look at the Matthew versus Williams debate, they, they are both fits, or at least I thought they would have both been fits. But at the same time, Matthew is four years older than Williams. Matthew, also, you can play him all over the place, but doesn't have as much range as Williams. Were you happy with the signing? Do you think this was the big ticket addition the Ravens needed to stay competitive and, one, sure up their secondary, but, two, make sure that they don't go back to what that past defense was in 2021? Yeah, that's exactly right. Last. <laughs> Looking just terrible. Uh, every time you turn around, you're just seeing teams, you know, pull off the miraculous, and a lot of it was through the air. And so that is – Something that became priority number one. You got to go ahead and rush the quarterback. We already talked about Zadarius no longer rushing <laughs> the quarterback in purple. Uh, but then also when you see the bigger picture and you're talking about secondary coverage, if you have a safety that can put guys in position, now I, I see, all right, you know, here's three by one over here. I see that, you know, this is the route combination that's going to happen. Okay, this is the target. Let me go down here. My instincts tell me to make this play over here. And if Marcus is that guy, which he's shown on film to be that guy, he's clearly, you know, statistically looking at it. He showed up big time when it came to the actual art of making the play and, and or uh, causing the turnover. That's what you need. That That's, that's the AFC North. Uh, that's the AFC overall. That's competing against teams like the Bills and the Chargers and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs and people in your own division like the Bengals now and obviously Pittsburgh and the way they're going to try to reload with Trubisky, but we shall see. However, you just can't uh, sit back and relax and think that everything is just going to work itself out when you have holes in the secondary. I think he feels a tremendous need for this Ravens ball club. We'll see as far as the rehab of Marcus Peters. We'll see as far as the rehab of uh, – uh, Marlon, but I know this to be true. It's cool that 
you you can say, hey man, there's a safety, the potential of an Eric Weddle type, um, and and we won't necessarily put him in an edge category yet, but uh, certainly he has the blessing of uh, Eric Weddle. We'll see whether or not how it translates over into real time play. Right, and speaking of needs, offensive tackle another need for this Ravens team. And they go out there, they get Morgan Moses, three years, $15 million total, $5 million average annual value for a player that in Moses has played in every game for the past seven years, started all but one of those games. Pretty impressive, honestly, and can slot in at right tackle and provide them with some solid play. Key, were you happy with this signing for the price the Ravens got him at and the player that he is? Absolutely. Check off the boxes of do we make a good business, smart move deal for us? Yes. Check off the box as far as filling a need. Yes. Check off the box as far as talent. Yes. So that's ultimately what it comes down to football wise. Obviously, um, the fact that he's been durable, the fact that he's been able to go out there and just play his game, his style, his way really shows an awful lot. And I just think that, uh, you know, for the Ravens, what they need is security on the offensive line. What they need is an ability for Lamar to progress uh, in his game. The only way he's going to progress if he's upright. So in my opinion, it's a great call. My opinion, it is one of those things where if I am Lamar or if, you, if I'm a receiver, I'm especially happy too because, again, we've seen, we've seen it and we've talked about it many a time during the season where – there were plays to be had only to be thwarted from said play happening because of pressure in our quarterback's face. This kind of solidifies some things. And it's always good to have a chance to have a guy who can also block because then you're also you're looking at play action, which again opens me up for a deep ball down the football field. So a lot of positives, I think, with this signing of Moses. Right, and flipping over to the other side of the trenches, Michael Pierce ends up being re-signed by the Ravens, a three-year, about $16.5 million deal. Now, Pierce ends up departing Baltimore a couple of seasons ago. It seemed like the Ravens really wanted to try to play him and Brandon Williams together on the field. It just didn't really work out. From They needed more pressure, and that's part of the reason why they favored guys like Calais Campbell and Derek Wolf as opposed to Pierce because Pierce is – he, he's a nose tackle, and I think this is kind of the one-for-one one trade-off that some people were expecting. Maybe not Pierce in particular, but if they bring in another guy like Brandon Williams, it seems like now Brandon Williams, his time in Baltimore is, is all but up unless he comes back on a very minimum deal in a very limited role. So, Q, do you, do you like this signing in terms of what the Ravens got value-wise for Pierce and as a player who can step into the role of Williams and produce at a bit younger of an age? So if the draft is heavy with defensive linemen, and you know that that's a need that you, you're going to have. It is, if I'm McDonald, I, I, I want veterans. I, I, it is imperative to have guys know my system so you can teach it to the young guys, teach them how to go about their business the correct way, the Ravens way. Uh, play hard, play fast, play physical, play assignment football. No freelancing. Know that, you know, hey, as a D lineman, there's times you're going to be occupying. There's times where you're going to be shedding guys and, and making – tackles in the backfield for loss. All those things come into play. There's an aggressiveness to the defense as well, but you got to know your assignment. A veteran player like Michael Pierce, that that's 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 right up his alley, that's right up the Ravens alley. I think this is a, a, a good thing for for both sides. Uh, clearly, you know, the, the bigger picture of it is is clearly when it comes to uh you know, Michael, I'm sure he would have loved to have been that free agent who you know, finished off his deal as far as with the Vikings, but they got a new uh, ownership and not necessarily ownership, excuse me, new coaching staff. And so therefore for him to transition back over to where you've, you've, uh, you kind of were, were homegrown here in Baltimore. So I think it's a good uh, comfort zone for him to be in, to know that I can just come in. I, I know my way around the locker room. I know my way around the city. Those are little things I don't got to worry about. Let me just go out there and concentrate on playing ball. And, yes, again, like I said, those young guys that are going to be in that room, now they get a chance to look at a guy and see how it's done. 
Yeah, and I like this signing a lot. I, I understand that there's been a little pushback about it from some Ravens fans about, well, you know, the Ravens have drafted those guys or signed those guys as undrafted free agents for, for years now, and Pierce was one of them. He was one of those undrafted guys. But to me, I agree with you, Q. Having a veteran in that room is really key. And right now, you know, Derek Wolf, it seems like he will be back, but he he's not a nose tackle. You know, Michael Pierce fills a need for them right now. Brandon Williams is a free agent at this point, and his play has dropped off over the last couple of seasons. And so you're getting a player who is one of the better pass rushing nose tackles in the NFL, can hold the A gap well, can stop the run. It's a balanced play. And I think for signing one of the better nose tackles in the NFL to a deal that's not seven million per year, eight million per year, getting them around five, a little over five per year, I think that's good. And I know. Michael Pierce is not Zadarius Smith. I think that's also part of it too, where people were they were they were convinced. All right, Zadarius Smith is coming to Baltimore. They also can maybe get Michael Pierce too. But now Smith is gone. Pierce comes in, and people are saying, "Well, this isn't this isn't a Zadarius Smith type signing." So it's disappointing. I think if the Smith thing didn't happen and Pierce had come in and just been like by himself as an announcement, I think that it may, maybe would have been a bit less pushback. But I understand some of the disappointment that. Oh, well, Michael Pierce is no Zadarius Smith. But even so, I think this is still a very quality signing for a team now that has been very aggressive early on here in free agency. And when we get back here in our final segment, we'll dive into what the Ravens could do from here and talk about what their next moves could be. So stay tuned for that. But first, let me tell you a bit about Bill Bar. This is the time where the people have given up on their news and solutions. But if you're sticking to eating healthy this year, do it with Bill Bar. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because actually <laughs> they're really good. And if you haven't tried the Bill Bar Puffs yet, you're actually really missing out to the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy and marshmallow and they're not just a protein bar. They are a treat. The Bill Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate and they're low calorie and high protein. They contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They have great flavors too, like mint brownie, which is my personal favorite, coconut, coconut almond, and much more. So go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, you get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. We're back. Our final segment of this Purple Friday edition of Locked On Ravens. Kevin is still here with Kadri, Ismael, and Q. The Ravens, again, pretty aggressive opening couple of days of free agency, which I think personally has been a very good thing for them. But where do you feel like they can go from here? They have signed some big ticket players. They will probably have to restructure a couple guys if they want to make another one of those big ticket additions because so far they haven't really outside of the Tavon Young release, the Alejandro Villanueva retirement. There hasn't been a lot of salary cap movement from them. So where do you see them maybe looking over these next couple of days positionally? Do you see edge rusher? Do you see inside linebacker center? What's on your mind there? Yeah, I think, you know, the center position still concerns me, uh, whether or not it is a Bozeman deal or, heck, I mean, the, the other, you know, big-name guys are, you know, locked up. I, I guess, um, what's our dude, Ryan Jensen from Tampa, he resigned once he realized 12 was coming back. So he was like, well, I'm going to stick with TB12. So let's just go ahead and take our names off the board. I think when you look at the bigger picture, um, yeah, Bozeman would, would – kind of be my, all right, let's get serious about this um, from a free agency standpoint and and have him kind of get locked down. I think also, uh, you know, if there's more to the the, the, the Zazaria Smith story, cool, let's figure that out, you know, see if there's, you know, wiggle room for him to, you know, to come back. If there's not, then, okay, if, if the door's closed, door's closed and locked up, okay, so what? Um but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't see this uh, offseason really making big splashes again if you're not really talking about the, the number one big splash signing that needs to take place. And uh, that's Lamar Jackson. I mean, getting him signed. You know, we seem to like what everything else is happening and doing, but all right, like, let's, let's, let's see you guys get a deal done with Lamar and and how that's all going to turn out. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I think for me, center also Q is one of the bigger positional needs. They still need to address. I've said it before, you know, Lamar Jackson's looking like Odo Beckham taking those snaps. It's, it's not what you want. You got to have a reliable option who can get the football to Lamar Jackson the right way and block for him in both the run and the pass game, help the Ravens run game, be able to flourish, help the Ravens pass game. 
be able to flourish. So I think Bozeman, the market with, with each day that Bozeman does not get signed to me, it seems more and more likely that he does come back to the Ravens. JC Treader, an option who was released by the Cleveland Browns, I think is better than Bozeman, but would cost more than Bozeman. So you have to weigh those options. Where do the Ravens restructure for money, extend for money? They have options there, but another option, potentially a guy who they could re-sign Patrick Ricard, someone who was rumored there could be potential tight end money on the board. But Q, do you see now that maybe with the fullback market drying up a little bit, there's a much more likelihood that Ricard comes back to Baltimore? Do you still think he might be on the on the way out? Yeah, I, I mean, there's no real rush if, if again, like Zadarius had options. Like, or why would I back out of the deal? I think for Baltimore, they feel like they – aren't really fighting up against anybody. So why negotiate against yourself when technically, all right, who's out there? You know, Pat, you, we love you. We understand what you bring is a value to the Ravens, but here's the price point we're going to set. Um, that's kind of where it's at. Like what team, you know, do you look at that says I'm a run dominant team that I'm looking for, you know, versatile fullback? It's hard for me to think of one. You know, there are a lot of teams that are, whether it be an H back, whether it be a tight end, whether it be no back, just one back in the backfield. And hey, man, we got an offensive line. You're going to pick your hole and pick your spots. So there's a lot of uh, negotiation play by not saying anything, by not allowing anything to happen. That that's uh, coming along when it comes to uh, Pat Ricard. I, I think he who uh, just got signed by the Bengals, um, uh, the former, our former tight end, uh, Hayden Hurst. And so when it comes down to it, you know, you, you're just trying to you, – musical chairs, as long as the music doesn't stop playing, and if it does, you better have a chair. And I think, you know, that's something for, you know, Pat Ricard. He's trying to jockey for a position and see where things might end up for him. Yeah, all these negotiation tactics that players, agents, teams go through, you know, it all is for a bigger goal. And I think that for the Ravens, Bozeman and Ricard were two players that it seemed like the reports coming out, it was, okay, well, there's going to be a market. The Ravens probably can't match that with the other signings they might make, so they're probably gone. But as you talked about earlier, Q, the, the center market has kind of dried up, except for Bozeman and Treader. The fullback market seems like the Dolphins, Raiders making their moves, leaving Ricard with, you know, a couple less suitors. So it could just be, you know, the Ravens are the best fit for them. The Ravens also, it's a sense of familiarity, comfortability with these guys where they can come back and already know what's expected of them, know their teammates, know this and know that. So I think those are really key points as well. But Q, the cornerback position is one also that's interesting to me. Now, Anthony Averett ends up going to the Las Vegas Raiders on a one year, $4.5 million deal. But the Ravens right now with Tavon Young released, Abert not an option anymore. They have Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, both guys coming off of pretty serious injuries. J.C. Jackson goes to the Los Angeles Chargers. It seems more and more likely now that the Ravens are probably going to take multiple cornerbacks in the draft. Do you feel like that's the most likely avenue for them showing up their cornerback room and getting the depth behind those couple players? Or do you think that they could still make a big splash in free agency there? Yeah, I, I think draft again. Uh, if 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 there is ever position, defensive tackle, offensive line, and corner uh, that can be filled up via the draft, especially this year's, then knock yourself out. Go get them. I think that you know there's a set salary that you have to play with as far as money in that regard. So I think um, there's some some fresh new talent that can be brought aboard and. See where the chips, you know, fall. And again, you're also looking at the Ravens play the long term game. They're always looking at upgrading their roster. So late in the the off season, as a regular season is about to take place, you know, they're still looking to make deals and and make things happen. So I don't think this is, oh my gosh, you know, Anthony Averett's gone. All right, enjoy yourself, brother. I, I think it'll be great. But um, ultimately, I think when we look back on this offseason for the position of corner. If you feel good about Marcus Peters, you feel good about Marlon Humphreys, and knowing that they're going to be back healthy, then patience can happen when it comes to free agency. Patience can happen as far as drafting. 
quality guys because now you go ahead in the camp with a whole lot of depth and who knows who's going to be a salary cap casualty come the second wave of cups cuts. So there's a lot there's a lot left to this offseason. We and rightly so and that's okay that we can do it. We get caught up in all the the um, wow splash news. That's great. But I think that's something where ultimately I, I, I've been doing it for so many years. It's like, all right, this is what the Ravens do. Let's be patient. It's going to happen. Um, and, and I think corner is, is no different. I know John loves his corners. And when he doesn't have them, 2015 uh, happens, or heck, you're in the playoffs and you got a bunch of no-name dudes, then you know, you, you, you looking nuts. And then 2021 also happens when you got corners going down and you don't have quality – backups either so i think he recognizes corner he needs them and they're going to go out there and get them yeah there are so many different areas where the ravens can improve through the draft and not necessarily spend top dollar to get a quality player you can get some of these guys in the second third fourth round so you can have on a four-year deal for very very cheap and get production that you get out of a veteran just to, with a younger player at a much better price and so i don't think the ravens are done in free agency you know we talked about it a bit there q it's with center and maybe some defensive linemen still and if they do reopen the Zadarius Smith door it probably doesn't seem super likely right now in fact it doesn't seem likely at all but it feels like maybe maybe there's the one percent chance that it happens and the door still kind of cracked it could it could it could be there but overall I think the Ravens they have shown that they are going to not sit back and watch while these other AFC teams go out there and make their moves and, and we talked about that on previous episodes Q where you know with the comp pick formula if it it's the difference between a Marcus Williams and not a Marcus Williams, I'm taking the Marcus Williams. And that's exactly what they did this year. So I'm very happy they're taking that approach. They have shown that they're going to spend big. I don't think it means they're going to sign 10 million more guys to a hundred million dollar contracts, but I still think that they showed that aggressiveness and that's what I wanted to see out of them. So I'm very happy in that regard, but that's all I have for you here today, Q. Thank you so much for hopping on here talking some crazy Ravens free agency news. Let me get back here next week. You know, we'll probably have more crazy Frazier Ravens news to talk about. I'm looking forward to it, and I know this to be true. Thankfully, we are looking at a off season where you can't crown the Cleveland Browns the paper Super Bowl off season champion any longer. Now that they're talking about, oh God, we're breaking up with Baker Mayfield. <laughs> it was like clockwork. Now it seems like that time is over. But that's all I have you here today on Locked On Ravens. We'll take a two day break. We'll make it back here on Monday. We'll dive into another mock draft Monday. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you on Monday.